Hello and welcome back to another TFR podcast. We are here today to review the Monaco Grand Prix, which was back after missing last season due to COVID-19. It was Max Verstappen who won after inheriting pole position after Charles Leclerc took pole in quali, but dramatically crashed the car, meaning he couldn't start the race. In that race, there was only two overtakes. So Cam, on your very first podcast, I'm straight away asking you a difficult question. Did you enjoy the 2021 Monaco Grand Prix? <laughs> Short answer, no, not really. Uh, the result, I mean, the result was great for many people, but as you said, there's, there's two overtakes, and it's just, it was just a load of sit behind one car and then hope to get them in the pits. Mm. So if you want to talk about overtakes on track, yeah, there was not very many. So in terms of excitement, it was really poor but the result in the end probably I would say one of the best this season so far so it's sort of a mixed bag really absolutely and um, it was it was once again I mean really that's not it wasn't actually really a difficult question to be honest I mean I should have probably said uh, did you enjoy the weekend as a whole because I think um, the the qualifying was actually arguably better than the race um, I don't know what you think about that, but obviously we'll we'll start with that. Uh, that we'll go straight in there, and the and the drama of qualifying. And uh, if if you've been living under a rock, uh, Ferrari were back, weren't they, Cam? They were pretty down quick this weekend. Um, uh, yeah, back. Well, back where they it, it's, in, it's, in two are they? That's the thing. That I think that's the question, Cam. Are they back, or is it just a one-off? I mean, what do you think of that? Do you think it's a one-off? I don't know. I mean, they've been quick all season in the the like the sharp corners and the, mm, the close the slow sections of the track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, well, yeah. Like Spain last set, that they were they were rapid all week, and but honestly, I can't see them being this high until. Singapore to be honest mm. because you've got obviously you've got tracks like Hungary as well but they're just they bog down massively on the straight and I feel like anywhere else it doesn't matter how quick they are in the corners they're just a sitting duck compared to like Red Bull Mercedes and even McLaren to be honest because McLaren have got that Mercedes engine I, I just I don't think Ferrari can compete this high for a while yeah, I, I, I completely agree with that, and, and that's what furthermore makes it such a shock, I feel. Um, you know, when we came into the, the weekend and saw Ferrari uh, at the top of the practice timetables, and, and yeah, they got pole um, with Charles Leclerc uh, after a stunning first lap, but uh, the, well, I'll go out there and say the most controversial moment so far this season, arguably. Um, with a, a certain incident, let's say that Cam, um, on his final qualifying lap, uh, where uh, it was just after the swimming pool, and uh, just clipped the the inside barrier and uh, went straight into the wall, brought out the red Clip flags. Is a bit nice. Yeah, <laughs> brought out the red flags, and that was that for qualifying. And I remember hearing on qualif um, on commentary, sorry, that uh, Crofty said you know like about shoot it was either crofty or brundle said something about schumacher in i think it was 2005 yeah. or six at rascas uh stopping the car ceiling pole what did you make of it i mean you know it, what what yeah just simple as do you think it was a deliberate crash or not uh to ceiling pole i think it was deliberate but i don't think it was Oof. planned right so like it, you could see at the end and the interviews you could tell that he didn't really care that he crashed now any other f1 driver if that was max max would have been furious with himself no matter if he was on pole or if he was fifth he, he honestly i think the part that points out that it could have been deliberate is the fact that his reaction when they asked him about the gearbox was massively changed from when they asked him about how his quality was because I feel like I don't think he understood how bad he had messed up with the crash until they had told him about the gearbox mm. do you think though yeah do you do you think that 
even when he got out of the car and had his hand, hands in his head, or head in his hands, should I say? Um, do you even think then that he that that was you know he he knew what he was doing there, or or do I you? Mean, th I think the moment he hit the barrier, he knew he had pole. Really? Oof! Spice it goes I mean, straight in there. We're not even ten minutes in. <laughs> You're already going for it. <laughs> no, honestly, like. It, right, let's go back to Baku 2019. No, was it 2019? Yeah, 2019. Yeah. Right. Hits the barrier. Mm. Says he's stupid. Now, yes, he was in, what, 16th or something like that. I can't remember. But you can see a very clear difference in his reaction. Mm. And I don't... I don't think it matters what position you are. If you hit the wall, you tend to be very, like, shocked and very annoyed with yourself. He seems to not really care that he'd put his car on the wall. So I reckon, mm. like, in all honesty, I don't see that being a coincidence. Interesting. Do you think, though, that it would have been too much of a risk to do it deliberately? Like, there's that element where, because he's actually hit the barrier, compared to Schumacher or Rosberg, where those ones, they haven't even touched a barrier, do you not think this one's slightly different? Well, or or are you are you sure? Are you sure he had it? You know, in his mind in that moment. Well, I know for a fact when Schumacher did it, he knew what he was doing. Yeah, categorically, yeah. Well, yeah. Rosberg. That's a little bit more know. subjective. I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. But Leclerc, as I said earlier, I know. I, I well, I don't know. I believe <laughs> he did it on purpose. But I don't think he knew he was going to do it until he got to there. Because if you look at it, Sector 1, he had it. But then Max and Bottas went purple, purple. Mm. And as soon as that happens, we see him in the wall. And I'm yeah. not being funny. All weekend, he's been ice at that chicane. He hadn't put a foot, he hadn't put a foot wrong once that whole weekend until that point. Mm. And to miss the corner by that much, it can't just be an accident. Interesting. Um, well, anyone watching at the moment, let us know in the comments what you think. If you think it was deliberate from Leclerc, or if you think it was just a a, a mistake. And um, and in the end, Charles couldn't even start the race. Uh, it was it was on the it was on the way to the grid, wasn't it, Cam? The 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 car had a problem with yeah. it, didn't it? I think it was the uh, well, yeah, it was the way to the grid. Mm. The felt somewhere in the rear and uh, well initially he thought it was the gearbox but it turned out to be I think it was it the drive shaft or something in the back yeah it was a different it was a different problem um, yeah. it's almost on the other side of the car I, I think I heard or something like that On obviously on that rear end but rear I mean, right I think yeah yeah rear so, left sorry rear left um, but yes and um, which meant we didn't have a car on the pole position spot for the the race start and uh, so obviously Max was now technically um, the lead car. Uh, well, he was, but he, <laughs> but he wasn't in that pole position spot. So he had a bit of a longer run down into turn one cam, and um, it was quite close, wasn't it, between him and Bottas off the line? He had to really shut the door, uh, didn't he? If I'm honest, I don't think Bottas would have got him anyway. I think it was more mm. of just a, a statement to just say, right, right you, you're not getting past. Because I think Max, he's not stupid. He knows if Bottas get past him, he's probably not going to get past him on track. So mm. I think I don't think Bottas would have got him, but the cover off that sharp, it was risk. But if you look back, he definitely paid off. Well, it was a, a critical moment because there's not many opportunities you can overtake around Monaco, as uh, as we've already said. But um, this obviously moved everyone up the order. Uh, but someone who was down the order, uh, who we've somehow not even mentioned yet, Lewis Hamilton. Now, what went wrong at Monaco? Dearie me. I mean, uh, we'll obviously get onto it as the race, uh, as, as we go through the race. He did help beat his teammate, but for the, the other parts of the, the weekend, Bottas was way ahead of Hamilton, uh, Cam. And, you know, what, what happened to him? You know, the... It, he was uh, the Mercedes was obviously off the boil, but 
But even Lewis yeah. himself was massively off the pace. It was bizarre, wasn't it? Uh, I don't know. You never normally see Lewis have a bad weekend. And, mm. well, if you see it, and if you do see him have a bad weekend, it's not the whole weekend, it's one day. Mm. So, normally, Lewis being seventh, you'd be like, I win the race. But it's Monaco, and, and even in practice, he was down in like fourth. I don't think he ever topped the session. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he did, no, not one session. Um, and it's it's kind of crazy, really, um, that he, he was just so far off. And it, it's, you just don't see uh, even Bottas, you know, were yeah. running in the top three, um, even in qualifying. And Hamilton was way off. And, I mean, I can actually get the exact timings here of the gaps. I think the gaps are semi-close. But, um, I mean, Lewis Hamilton... Was, Lewis was walk, walk no, he wasn't, off. actually. Yeah, he was. He was quite a way off, yeah. So, four tenths off Bottas. I mean, uh, not even that. It's nearly, it's nearly half, a, half a second. Yeah, um, you never see that. Yeah, uh, so, you know... I don't know. First, kind of crack in the armour, almost, for Lewis, I'd say, Cam. And, I mean, you know, he was looking... I mean, this was his best start to the season he's ever had in his F1 career, which I couldn't believe... And, you know, he was on an absolute high after winning in Spain. And then, yeah, they rock up to Monaco. And he looks like he was he's had a bad start to the season, things like that, you know. Obviously, it's just one race, Cam. But it, he, yeah. he, he, he he doesn't actually seem to do that well at Monaco. I know he's won there before. But he's not, you know, in terms of how he idolises Senna and people like that, he, he's not really done that well at Monaco when you think about it, Cam. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna compare Lewis to anyone, and we're going off that one race, mm. I can't help but compare him to Rosberg in 2016. Yeah, that's he had true. a flying start to the season. I think he won. Did he win every race until Spain or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. And then he just hit a brick wall in Monaco, mm. and it was it, it, similar to Lewis. You didn't see Rosberg struggle ever that much until mm. that point. And I don't know, I guess he just ran out of luck. Because Lewis is what, I think, some like two seasons without DNF, is it? Yeah, it's, it's, it. gonna ha it's gonna happen at some point where he'll have a bit of a an average race. Um, but the thing I mean, is, it wasn't was an average. average for Lewis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but we move on though, into the race. And uh, they Mercedes pit Lewis, and um, that was kind of the start of his main woes in the race, because it then got him kind of stuck behind a couple of other cars that uh, did the overcut on him um, but yeah. the the big moment in the race though Cam uh, Valtteri Bottas comes in the pits lap 31 and uh, yeah let's just say um, that tyre was not coming off was it you know what what nah, happened there Let, explain it to us well like quite simply just drilled the, the wheel to the car like yeah, I think it was something like was it 16 hours after the race that he still yeah. couldn't get the the wheel off. Mm. Uh, you've got to feel for the guy. Like he he had honestly, he had put no foot wrong all race mm. until that. Well, he you could you could see he was trying to drop off, so it was definitely the right choice to pit him. But I don't know. I don't think there's anything they could have physically done to save that from happening. Mm. Like, yeah, exactly. You can't magically go yet. You can stay out all race. We don't need to change your tyre because it's not coming off. But even if they had sent him back out and gone right, do a few more laps to try and find a fix, I don't think it would have worked because they drilled it onto the girl. That's the thing, and you know, if 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 there's some people listening and they don't know what happened or they're not that clued up to F1, think of it as like a screwdriver that you you know using them putting a nail in. If you if you do it too hard, it totally burns away the whole the grooves that you have to put the uh, the thing into, and this is essentially what happened here, Cam. Is that like you say, yeah. you know, the 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 nut or the whatever they call it, I can't actually remember to be honest, that they screw onto the tire and uh, see like they they just burnt it off, so they just couldn't get it off, um, to then obviously take the tire off. But um, I'm getting vibes so far with Bottas this season Cam of like 2018 not obviously the same because he was like winning races or in position to win races yeah. in 2018 but I mean, to be fair you could say he was in the position to win this race yeah yeah that's true um, you never know never what could happen 
Yeah. <laughs> um, and but you know he he's getting quite unlucky, and it's not a good time for that as well. You know this is a critical season for Bottas, and obviously it's no fault of his own this particular incident. But you know, like um, it, it's it's a massive it, and it was just a massive moment for his season. I feel because it's like in terms of getting in any kind of mix near the front you know even just being near them he yeah. you know he's way behind now but um yeah that was Bottas out of the race and a very bizarre incident in the pits we've we've not seen anything like that in a long long time in terms of the actual um the wheel not just getting so welded onto the car that couldn't get the damn tire off but yeah. um Again, that obviously promoted more cars up the order, and uh, in, a, in a weird way, actually, it benefited Hamilton. Right, he didn't really, did it? Because he still ended up in the same place. Well, true, but also if Bottas finished lower, the actually. race, he would have been even lower. But um, at this point, Hamilton has got stuck behind uh, Gasly whilst this uh, Bottas pit stop uh, commotion is all going on. And uh, he's he's pretty furious on the radio as well, Hamilton, saying you know the team's cost him and stuff like that. And then we get to lap 32, and this was the this was the moment that got everybody talking for good yeah. reasons, bad reasons, every reason. Um, talk us through it, Cam. So we're beginning. Smashing Vettel has came right. in the pits and he's just came out. What what happens here? <laughs> Right. Well, once Lewis has stopped being a little baby over the uh, <laughs> the, the radio, um, it cuts to Lewis and Gasly come into time one, and then you see a wild Sebastian Vettel coming out of the pits. Mm. Now, Seb comes out alongside Pierre Gasly, and then um, <laughs> Lance Stroll hits the chicane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's... And then... Um, to, to sum it up in a better way, uh, Sebastian Vettel schools Hamilton and gets ahead of him in the slower car. Brutal. <laughs> Not holding any punches there. Bloody hell. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was quite well. It was infuriating at the time. But, um, not 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 Vettel doing this fantastic overcut on both Gasly and Hamilton, um, considering he was miles behind them uh, when they both pitted. But as we, yeah, like you say, go up the hill, um, a bloody replay to Lance Stroll pings up <laughs> on the screen, and the Monaco TV director is creating the almighty meme of like the season so far, and yeah, it was just like absolute mess of like TV direction and everything. And we generally didn't even know. I mean, we thought Vettel got ahead, obviously he did in the end, but yeah. we didn't know at the time. It was like the worst time ever. But um, yeah, it was great to see though, wasn't it, Cam? I mean, that that pace from Vettel, finally he's came alive in the Aston Martin, and you know I've been one to moan quite a lot about him so far this season, and there we go, you know he's back now, in in the kind of showing the pace that he's got, and you know with obviously a good strategy there, it was much better than uh, what the others have came up with. But he made it count, didn't he, Cam? And um, I'm sure for for anyone listening that knows you, you're obviously yeah. a big Vettel <laughs> fan. So you, you, I, I would imagine you were delighted to see him back to his his normal self. Well, him being in fifth wasn't actually the part that made me happy. The part mm. that made me happy was how much he actually pulled away from Gasly and Hamilton. True. Because yeah. there was like five, six laps where he pulled. I think it was like a two-second gap to them. So it wasn't mm. like you have Lewis moaning over the the headset or whatever they use. But <laughs> I'm sorry, but Lewis wasn't exactly making any progress because I think he was like 1.5 behind Gasly as well. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, if we want to quickly finish off with Lewis, I think he was a little bit sort of. He, let's just say he had a big ego because he was <laughs> sat there complaining to the team that they had stuffed it up. Yeah. I'm sorry, but all weekend he's been nowhere. Yeah. Absolutely. They said he started... The only time we, I think we ever saw Lewis do anything significant mm -hmm. was when they pit him for fresh softs and he managed to do a lap. Like, and even then, he had I think it was 10 laps at the end and he didn't catch Gasly by much. No, I don't know. I think yeah. he just... 
he's quick enough to blame the team when it's not his when it's well, when it's his fault in my opinion. Because I don't think the team could have done anything different. Because if if Hamilton hadn't pit, Gasly wouldn't have pit. Yeah. So yeah. they go, oh, why have you let them over course? I reckon they would have done that anyway. So Absolutely, yeah. Fifty-fifty. Um, yeah, it was not a great day, well, or a whole week really for Mercedes. And uh, to put further salt in the wounds, uh, Red Bull, both cars overcutting, and Mr. Yeah. Sergio Perez doing an almighty overcut, a little bit like Vettel, and uh, somehow found himself right up in fourth and was challenging Lando Norris uh, towards the end of the race. Um, and with Perez finishing fourth and Verstappen winning the race, Red Bull ahead of Mercedes now in the constructors. I mean, of oh, one it's like point. Crazy. It is one point. Yeah, you're right. But it's like the first time, you know, Red Bull have done that in the whole hybrid era. I mean, it's like astonishing, um, really. Did it? Yeah, yeah. They've not yeah, done it in the constructors that. on any other season since obviously. Have they ever like, done it in the drivers either? Uh, no, no, I don't believe so. No, because I don't think Daniel Ricciardo in 2018. I know he won a couple of races, but it just wasn't close enough. So it's kind of incredible, really. Um, and Bird yeah, said, well, yeah, well. and it kind of has re-energized the season in a way. It wasn't the greatest race, but it, it's really spiced up the championship now. It's closed it back up. A lot of people were fearing. Obviously, you know, this is just one a very different track to any that we've had so far this season. But a lot of people were worried that, oh, you know, Mercedes is getting back in the groove. Well, you know, now they've lost the, the lead of both championships. So, you know, it's game back on in terms of if anyone wants a close title fight. But um, in terms of games that are not on, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. is Daniel Ricciardo. That's the next bit I've got here in the uh... race. And it's Lando Norris lapping him, giving him a little wave as well as he does it. And oh, Danny Rick. oh my! Considering we were just saying that he won this race, literally uh, three three years, three years ago, for Red Bull, and he's getting lapped down into twelfth by his teammate. Oh. What's going on, Cam? What is oh, going on with Danny oh. Ricciardo? It's a sad sight. <laughs> I I don't think he was there this weekend. I mean, has he been there this season? <laughs> Never mind this weekend. Well, he's shown signs of pace at every track, mm. but I don't know. He just there's nothing's gone right at Monaco. Nothing went right at Monaco at all. And throughout the race, qualifying was just a horror show for him. Yeah. But then the race, the commentators were saying, "Oh, he's being held by Kimi Raikkonen." Yeah. I've got it on here. He finished in what? I think it was what. Five seconds behind him, yeah, if not more. Yeah. So there's just no excuse. no excuse. All I will either. say though is, I'm not sure why or how, but when Norris got past him, there there must have been some of the click because for the next like ten laps, he was with Norris. He was sat there. Yeah, um, but the thing is though, I feel like Ricardo. I mean, I bloody said he was going to get on the podium for this weekend when I made predictions last week. I, I mean, wouldn't we'll, be surprised we'll, if he we'll did. Touch, we'll touch we'll on that didn't. in a moment. Uh, but I mean, I genuinely thought you know Monaco is a, is his happy hunting ground, and he was awful. He was way off the pace, and um, yeah, really, really disappointing from Danny Rake. Um, but he what? Well, but we will swiftly move it on though. Um, because there wasn't much else that happened in the Monaco Grand Prix uh, but it was Max Verstappen who came to the uh, to the last lap leading the way and yes crossed the line to dominate you would have to say the Monaco Grand Prix with Sainz yeah. we've not even said about yet finishing uh, second fantastic result for him maybe a missed opportunity well certainly a missed opportunity for Ferrari to win um, and Lando Norris somehow finding himself on the podium, which he was absolutely delighted with. And um, yeah, it was quite a nice podium to see, actually. I mean, they all know each other pretty well. And, Good um, question. Yeah, go Is on. that the youngest podium? No, or it's not. It Italy isn't. Beat it? I saw, yeah, I think it is still Italy because I saw something oh, about okay. that. Um, but that is a very good shout, you saying that. Um, because it was a very young podium 
and unfortunately, yeah, Sainz, I believe, yeah, they they said about this in the post race press conference. I, I've seen a clip about this because Max was like How old Stroll? pulling his leg. Uh, Stroll's quite young. I think he might be 23. Um, I think the problem here is that Sainz is actually like 26 now at least. What? So that's wow. why, yeah, <laughs> pretty sure. Like 24. Yeah, wow, that's why yeah. it's like outweighing the the scales in terms of the youngest podium. And then when you think like Max and Lando, they are obviously super Actually, young. But... How old is Gasly? Is Gasly younger than Max? Gasly's he's... pretty damn young, yeah. He He's not younger than Max, this, but... Give me a second. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, it, it, was a, it was a nice podium to see um, in terms wow. of a new some new faces um, in terms of science but yeah go on here's here's one for it uh, Gasly's 25 25 wow jeez but I definitely saw it. It, it it isn't the youngest it might not be Monza it might be something else then but um it's there's definitely a reason why it wasn't um but we, someone can find that someone can find that <laughs> and let us know in the comments because um, we've still got plenty to get through and the last thing uh, I'll say actually about the actual race was Serena Williams afterwards now I don't know what your thoughts were on this cam oh, God. but I've got a pet hate about these blooming celebrities um, getting involved that clearly do not care about F1 yeah. And even David Coulthard in the interviews, which somehow she kind of almost invaded, uh, not I don't think it was her choice, but like uh, they literally asked her, "Have you got any advice to Max?" It's like it was just pure cringe. I I, I mean, feel, she said I had the right to thing. Talk, talk about it because it was like, oh, yeah, it's horrible. DC was. Oh. No, it, she did say the right thing though. Like, she she was in no place to give to give Max advice. Yeah, true. Uh, I mean, I mean, gosh, she, she wants to see in a Formula One car and drive that fast. Sure, give us advice, but nah, no. That but I weird. mean, even if it was like you know, I don't know. Even if it because it's Monaco, even if it was like a film star or something, I could kind of get that. But as long as they're interested in F1, I don't really care who it is, as long as they have an interest. She oh, she totally, does not care about she F1. She does not that. care. She couldn't even damn say <laughs> Grand Prix right. I mean, oh, it was ridiculous. She's American. But, yeah, um, and we'll leave it at that. We won't. We, we don't want to offend <laughs> Logan. <laughs> but, um, Call that bit. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we'll look at the predictions now. That um, Obviously, unfortunately, Cam, you weren't uh, here for the, the previous, so you can pretend you were Liam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, we'll have a look here. And for pole position, both Liam and me said Verstappen. Uh, we can't really take the point for that, unfortunately. Mm, because yeah, point. <laughs> bec well, because Leclerc, you didn't get a penalty or anything, and mm. you know if he got a five place grid penalty, fair enough. But he didn't. Well, no, because he still goes in the records as pole, doesn't there? Really? Exactly. So, but um, so we've missed out on that. Um, will it be a good race? Now, I do not know what I was thinking here. I said it was going to be so. Uh, in case people don't understand this, I will just recap it. There's four options for this one. You've got two out of ten, where it's an absolute stinker of a race. Six out of ten, where it's just okay. Eight out of ten, where it's a pretty damn good race. And ten out of ten, you know, it's one of the best races of the season. For some reason, I said it was going to be a ten out of ten race. I don't oh, know God. what I was thinking. For Monaco, I've had an absolute shocker there. Um, but neither I can of name us... one ten out of ten Monaco race. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I don't know what I was thinking, but neither of us got it right because uh, you guys vote what you think uh, in terms of the viewers, and you said it was a 2 out of 10 race, so neither Liam and myself got that right. Um, will Aston Martin score points? I said hey. no, so I've oh, got that wow. wrong, but Liam said yes, so he has got that right, so... Uh, and I mean, did they ever score points? Sebastian Vettel for fifth place. I mean, that was an amazing Four result. Team, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, super good job for them. Will a McLaren beat a Mercedes or a Red Bull? Um, so it just needs one McLaren, and yes, uh, 
uh, Lando Norris was on the podium, beat oh. both a Red Bull and a Mercedes. And I said yes. Categorically. <laughs> yes. Danny yeah. Ripley and Mercedes. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. And uh, Liam said no. I wish I was very surprised to see. Actually, he expected it to be a bit of a Noah's Ark grid, which it really wasn't. Actually, it was a really mixed up order for once and uh, the penultimate one was gap in qualifying uh liam said half a tenth i said a tenth and um yeah i was closer on that one so i get the point there unfortunately for liam for gap in the end? it was two tenths from leclerc to verstappen probably wouldn't have been that if there wasn't the red flag but no. um it is what it is and then uh, the final one is the podium so uh, I said Verstappen, Hamilton and Ricardo. I get one for that. Obviously Hamilton and Ricardo is wrong. And Liam said Verstappen, Hamilton, Bottas and he only gets one as well. Uh, so it's weird because like we made those predictions Cam before any of the practice sessions and we were yeah. confident Mercedes were going to be on the podium and all that kind of thing. And they were nowhere. It's like oh my days. I just it's it's crazy. Um, I mean Bottas would have I don't know, yeah, you can't, you can't see that happening to him, let's be honest. Yeah, that is true, uh, in fairness. Um, but yeah, so the, the final score for this week is, yeah, unfortunately I have won. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've got uh, three uh, points to two, so sorry Liam, uh, better luck next time. <laughs> So, so we will move it on though uh, to the the best bit of the review podcast and the final part of the podcast. And uh, yes, it, it is my favourite bit: the driver ratings. And uh, Cam, you're, you're straight into the one of the tougher races to grade each driver for. Lovely. Um, for which is Monaco because it wasn't the greatest race as such so maybe that actually that works in your favor you know maybe it's no, a bit no, easier no, no, no. <laughs> but we'll start off with lewis hamilton what are you going to alphabetically grade him for the monaco grand prix right is it a to what a to f we'll go with that right. there's no minuses uh, it's just plus you giving hamilton an f yes oofed imagine no, imagine being um Imagine being seventh in a Mercedes, you should be fighting for the podium, <coughs> Mr. George Russell. <coughs> true, true. To be fair, because Bottas was up there. Um, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird, isn't hole. it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I feel I like it's harsh, but it's him. not, is it? Oh, if you, if you sat there and you wanted to give Seb ease. <laughs> in, the, in 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 now Aston Martin for coming like thirteenth, yeah. Lewis in a Mercedes in True. seventh. He, he can only be an F or an E, but I don't like Lewis, so it's an F. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, to start it off, that is <laughs> you know that's a statement and a half. Um, a more tricky one here, Valtteri Bottas. What are you going to give? <sighs> Bottas uh, obviously he was rather unlucky from what we saw he was dropping off at the end of the stint like he, he wasn't on the level of Max I don't think and you even had signs pushing him at the end so as much as he drove the hell out of that Mercedes I, I, I can't give him more than a B and a B is pushing it to be honest with what we saw I was I when I initially heard you say that I was like Huh? He didn't even finish the race. But, I mean, to be honest, with that explanation, I kind of do agree. Bottas was on it um, this weekend, uh, or last yeah. weekend, should I say, um, and he was much, much quicker than um, than Lewis Hamilton, which is not often you can say that. So, yeah, I totally agree with that, and especially when you DNF uh, and it's completely out of your control. Um, Max Verstappen, what are we going to give him, Cam? A. Like, if we're not doing A plus A minus, just an oh, A. Oh no, we are doing pluses. We are. The oh, only we're doing thing plus we're doing... A plus then, yeah, yeah. yeah Lewis yeah. is an F minus, but uh, Valtteri is a no, B minus. There, there's no minuses, <laughs> but there is pluses. I know it's confusing, <laughs> oh, but... <laughs> Lewis is a U. Um, no, uh, Max has to be an A plus. He yeah. didn't put a foot wrong all weekend, drove the hell out of that Red Bull. And, yeah. 
And do you, th- race, no. do you think you could have got pole as well? If like the drama at the end of qualifying didn't happen, I know that's very hypothetical, but I don't know. Because yes, he was purple, purple, but Leclerc's last set that was incredible. Mm. So it's he would have been he would have been very close, but you can't really stick a an opinion on that because it's it's fifty fifty really. Yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, what about Checo Perez? Uh, he went from uh, where did he? Start? He started in ninth. And went up to mm. P4. So that's pretty damn good, isn't it? So what are you going to give him? Pretty damn good, but it's... He, he, the fact that he was that in Monica, ninth though. in the first place. Yeah. Like... It's similar to Bottas, except the fact that... He's, his quality just wasn't there. Mm. Like, if you see, he was... Hang on, I'll pull it up. I think he was 20 seconds off max. And yes, he qualified ninth, but... He qualified ninth. It's not like he was held up or anything. Yes, so he probably... he was nearly twenty five seconds off to be precise. I've just looked at it. Yeah, there, yeah. I'd so... probably give him a C, a C plus because I don't Oof. see. Yes, he finished fourth, but he qualified ninth in a Red Bull. I love Checo, but you can't qualify ninth and be given driver of the day. You know what I mean? Hmm. Slightly harsh, the weekend, sorry, I think. Like that. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's slightly harsh because he did go from ninth to fourth at Monaco. I mean, that's pretty Didn't damn never good. Take anyone, True, but neither did Sebastian Vettel. Kind of. Well, mean, no, he would you call that an overtake? Like, like, we'll, we'll get onto that like, anyway. I, I won't. I, yeah. <laughs> I won't um, <laughs> change the subject. But um, we'll move on though to McLaren actually. Um, okay. Lando Norris, he was P5 in qualifying and P3 in the race. When that McLaren was definitely not a P3 car, I would say. I would definitely not say it was uh, podium worthy. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> I'd probably, I know he's on the podium and it's Lando Norris and he's in a McLaren, but I'd give him a B mm. purely because obviously you've got people that'd be like, Oh, but Lando Norris, he's on the podium. Mm. You put Leclerc back in, you put Bottas back in, he's his fifth again. Like, Yeah, it's, I mean... He's walking he, the end of the day. He was very close in qualifying. He was only two hundredths of a second off getting on the... Uh, sorry, not even that. Uh, I was going to say that for third, but uh, I'll say uh, the front row, he was only uh, four hundredths of a second off. You know, and that's literally yeah. the tiniest thing. Um... I mean, you'll hear later, I'm, I'm sort of comparing it to Sainz. Because mm. Sainz, although he inherited those places, Sainz was clearly quick. I, mm. I think Nar- Nor- Norris... <laughs> I think Norris... <laughs> he didn't Norris have the pace. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> he didn't have the pace to be P3, in my opinion. He had the pace to be where he would have been with Leclerc and Bottas. Mm. But you saw at the end, Perez was all over him, so... True. I can't give him an A for it, but a B is, I think, it's fair. So, just a a standard B. Right, yeah. uh, Daniel Ricciardo. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Um, he right. was... Where is he? Where is he? 12th, I think. Yes, I'm just... Yeah, he was 12th to 12th. Um, in, so, from qualifying to the race. Oh, I mean... Don't get me wrong, you gave Hamilton an F. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that, I was like, right, if I've given Lewis an F, yeah. and he's in the points, uh, it has to be, doesn't it? It has to be an F. <laughs> uh, he, he was nowhere, like, uh, he's I Daniel Ricciardo, I love Daniel Ricciardo, but, gah, yeah, it has to be an F. Like, that's an probably F. one of the hardest Fs I've ever given in my life. Lewis was, yes, get in, he's, he's, he's crap. <laughs> um, no, but nah, Daniel Ricciardo, it has to be an F. Like as much as I rate him and I love him, and he's he's. It was a like, bit of in a my shocker. opinion, he is one of the best drivers on the grid. But he was a howler, and I, I, yeah, you can't justify anything more than an F. One to forget for the Aussie, um, Aston Martin next. Uh, Lance mm-hmm. Stroll first. Um, uh-huh. We've got he qualified. Hang on. Where is it? Thirteenth and finished eighth. That's quite good actually. Uh, to be fair, 
How far off was he off his teammate? He was 11 Solid. seconds. Uh, sorry, 13 seconds that is? Oh, off his teammate. That. That is more so, than that. Oof, fair, fair A play. lot more than that. Stroll, you know, that's not too bad, I think. A lot more than 11 seconds. Unless he was a lap... Uh, unless he was on that crossover and this timings is not... No, 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 no. no. I've, got the, I've got the actual oh. results here. I was over a lap behind. Ah, oh, right. Well, he wouldn't well, have been a lap down like... from Vettel, like, because no, Vettel he, went a he lap was somewhat like, There was a massive gap between Stroll and Hamilton, I know that for a fact, and there's 12 seconds between um, Vettel and Hamilton. I'm trying to find it here. What I mean, got? regardless, he doesn't yeah. change, change my grading for him. Um, I'd give him a C+. Plus. Like, he drove incredibly well to get that long stint, but mm. he had no real outstanding pace like what did he have to compete with Ocon he, he had to compete with Ocon and Giovinazzi it's not like you're competing with uh, Lewis and Gasly you know what I mean true um, but I guess that's what all he needs to do isn't it you know yeah. if he could finish 8th actually no that's, that's unfair I'd give him a B I'd give him a B that's more like it I'm not a fan of Lance Stroll personally but I felt I, I don't he, mind he's he's I feel he's having a pretty good start to the season, like, um, under the I mean, radar. Maybe seven the championship, but we mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, like, it, I don't know, he's, he's just got a little bit of consistency in his game now, all of a sudden. And, um, and yeah, I mean, you know, he's only one point behind Vessel, actually, just having a quick check there. And it's, you know, he's, he's surprising me. I'll absolutely eat my words if we get to the last race of the season and Vettel's got like double points, <laughs> but he's he's not doing too bad so far. But um, I know yeah. you've been waiting for this one, Cam. Uh, so we'll yeah. get on to it. I don't Sebastian need Sebastian Vettel. Uh, I mean, uh, even I would uh, probably give what you're going to give him, and I'm not the most. Well, I give him an A plus, <laughs> but you know. Ah, yeah, I know. Degree. <laughs> you know, I think he's right up there. I'm going to be honest, I think it was a little bit of a... He's, he's found his footing. Because mm. I feel like, what have we had? We've had Spain, Bahrain, Portimao, yeah. Imola. They are incredibly quick tracks. Now, what the reason I think he did so well this weekend is because Monaco, it's slow. So yeah. every single corner, you get used to the car mm. without having to do 15 gear changes. Like, yeah, and everyone knows Monaco. I yeah, 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 doesn't change. I know it sounds a bit weird, but I feel like going at a slower track enables Seb to get more of a feel for the car. Because mm. in order for him to be fifth around Monaco, you need to ha hook up the car a hell of a lot. But I think he showed he's definitely still got it, which I've been saying all year. But you know, but <laughs> um, <laughs> honestly, seeing him in fifth is very it makes me happy. <laughs> so an A plus. Yeah. Yeah. Aston Martin in fifth. Nobody saw that coming. Well, 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 so, so uh, fantastic drive from Sebastian Vettel, and about time. About time he's back to his uh, good old self. Back to his best. Alpine next. Uh, Esteban okay. Ocon first. He was uh, in quality. He was eleventh in race. Yeah, he was ninth. And uh, he was in that kind of midfield pack. Although, actually, he was way off Stroll. He was uh, 37 seconds behind Stroll. So, it was a massive gap um, from 8th to 9th. So, yeah. but he, he really, really beat Alonso. And quite comfortably. So, what are we yeah, going to do? right. So, the grade I'm giving him is only this high. Because of what I'm giving Alonso. Right. And I'd give him a C plus. Okay. See now normally if he hadn't have slammed Alonso that much, I'd have mm. given him like a D plus. But really? the fact that he managed to score points in an Alpine that is clearly not what it was last season. It's very track different. dependent. I think, you know, like say was it Spain or Portugal, I can't remember which one it was. He's been um, outclassing him all season though. Yeah. Like, but the Alpine did suit those other circuits, and yeah. you know, and there was other tracks like Bahrain. You know, they weren't very quick, so it's a very track-dependent car. 
and uh, for them to pick up two points, they'll probably take it. Um, yeah, but absolutely. We'll say now, though, about Fernando Alonso. Deary me, beaten by even Ricardo, and oh, well, no. um, yeah, I'm beaten be by both Alfa Romeos, qualified. He got knocked out in Q1. He was 17th yeah. and 13th in the race. Yeah, this is not great. I'm going to be honest, though. I don't think, if you compare it to his teammate, I don't think he was bad as Lewis. And You know what? Hang on. Can I change one? Mm, well, no. We can't change that. We've no, committed. We've one. committed to it. Yeah. I just realised <laughs> I've been a little harsh on someone, but we... Okay. Um, <laughs> full send. <laughs> Um, what did I give Daniel? You gave Daniel an F. I think Alonso was is... it not even an F plus? No, I'm getting wow. E vibes oh. for from Alonso. Oh. I think an E would suit him quite well. I'm getting an yeah about <sighs> right in my head. <laughs> we don't have Tower yet. We don't have Tower yet. Not yet. They're still to come. Oh, I've got no measurement either. <laughs> oh, I think right. he's an E. I can't see how we can't. He's not I quite know what an F. I'm giving Sonoda. Yeah, but you I can't. Don't, I don't. Uh, nah, I don't think Alonso did as bad as Sonoda. I'm comparing him to his teammate. Right? Yeah, yeah, E. Yeah. I give him an E. <laughs> we got there in yeah, the end. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. We'll there. We'll we'll yeah. I. Yeah. He. He's got some work to do. Bang so, average. Let's just say that. He's. Well, no. he's right I, I think I'll come with bang average. Fernando then, started oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I. I agree. Like Fernando started well this season, um, but now yeah. he's like. Uh... <laughs> Next up, we've got Ferrari now. Um. Much right. better week for them. They had a much better car. It was just more altogether. Charles Leclerc didn't start the race, so it's very difficult to grade him here. Uh, but he was incredibly good in qualifying in terms of pace. So, a B maybe? Nah, you're not going to like this. But I've oh, got God. to back my point of I think he crashed on purpose. No, we can't take that in there. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not I'm doing it. it. I'm no. doing it. You can have your one. I'm putting it as a D. A D? How can you give him a yeah. D? He's the key, guy got down pole in a Ferrari. He caused the issue that caused him not to start the race. You can't give him a B when he's physically he made him a Ferrari. Himself. Yes, asking... but he didn't start the race because of his own crash. Uh... Can we agree to disagree and go for a C? I can't give yeah, him a sure. D. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's easy then. <laughs> but, um, yeah, C, so yeah, go up in the middle. A D? No, definitely oh. not a B, though. And I, I think C's very generous because he's crashed himself and he hasn't started the race because of that crash. Mm, like, I don't know. I think he'll be incredibly just say, if he harsh. started the race, I don't know. I don't care where he finished, he would have been a solid B. He could have won that crashed. race. He, yeah, but he didn't because he crashed. Uh, I don't know. I'll I'll accept to see, but I you caught me off guard there. I didn't expect. That'll be that. one for the comments. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> I I knew that was going to be difficult. Right, um, science no, I had next. I my head from the start. <laughs> science next. Okay. He got second. Um, obviously. Uh, helped by the Bottas and the Leclerc thing after he qualified fourth. Uh, his first podium in a Ferrari. What are we going to give him? Um, right, it's a bit ambitious, but I've got to give Science an A+. Plus. An A+, plus? come on, yeah, you got to hear just me give out, him an A. Hear me out. Just give him an hear A. Hear me out. <gasps> no, 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 hear me out. Here's the reason for an A+. Plus. So getting a podium, that's fair enough. That would be an mm. A just as itself. The fact that he was clearly faster than Mercedes, the Bottas, he was on pace for a second. So he didn't put a foot wrong. And mm. I, in my opinion, an A plus is reserved for someone that just was flawless. Max was flawless, Seb was flawless, and if going by that, Signs was flawless. Mm. I don't know. I feel an A plus is quite dramatic. He didn't. He I just, I he just had a you the other week. 
in my opinion, the A plus is reserved for those great drives, like the top drives that you don't often see. Seb, you never see him fifth. Max, yes, you see him first, but you don't see him cruise to the finish easily. Mm. And then you've got signs. Would you have gone into this weekend, uh, even with Leclerc there, and if you knew that the Ferrari was that quick, would you have put your money on signs being second? No, but that is circumstances, exactly. though. That's what you, ha you have to consider that as well. Yeah, but, but so is Max. But like, equally, we've given Norris a B, and he moved up to third. So did I give Norris a B? You did give him a B. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> that's they, what they I mean. Were, I said when I gave Norris a B, I'm comparing him to Signs. I feel like Signs had the pace to be second, no matter what happened. Mm. But Norris, I don't feel like if if you put Leclerc and I mean who else? Oh, hang on, Bottas <laughs> back in. I don't reckon Norris would have got third. I reckon Signs would have got at least third, maybe second. Mm. So if you want to knock it down to an A, that's fine. But in my opinion. It was an outstanding draw. I am going to have to intercept this one. I'm going for an A. Fine, fine. Because I'll do, I'll do a poll. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't put Science and Vettel on the same. You know, for me, that Vettel anyway, had a great is, drive. Science had a good him, drive. I love but there is 46 seconds between them. But equally, one's in an Aston Martin, one's in a Ferrari. You've got to take a pinch of salt with that element. <laughs> we'll move it on, we'll move it on. Um, Alpha Tauri next. Uh, Pierre Gasly, first up. Uh, he had a good weekend, actually. He was P6 in qualifying, P6 in the race. Finished ahead of uh, the mighty Lewis Hamilton by 15 seconds. Um, because of the pit stop. Because of the pit stop, yeah, that is a good shout, yeah. Uh, but... He was right on the tail of Vettel. You know, it's not bad from Gasly. So, what what are we going to give him? Ah, uh, it's difficult because I've given I've given Norris a B, and I so he wasn't as good as Norris. Hmm. Uh, see, it it's... feels harsh, but if you look at what I've slapped Lewis with, oh god, here we go. I'd give Gasly a C plus. All right, that's not, that's not harsh. Yeah, no, 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 harsh. no, no, no. I meant. I mean, because he, he, he's sixth. And if you look at Sonoda, who's just... He's, 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 yeah, that's... I'm not allowed <laughs> we'll to We'll get on that, that, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's done a good drive, and I feel like C is a little bit... Ah, uh, he could have got a B. But if I've given Norris a B, I can't exactly give Gavin a B. Yeah, so we're going for a C plus there. Yeah. Yuki Sonoda. For someone who had so much hype about him after Bahrain, and it was like, this guy's going to be the greatest Japanese driver of all time, and he could still be. Um, it's He's had a rough old time. Knocked out in Q1 once again. I think that's the fourth week in a row. I think that's been every single race since Bahrain he's got knocked out in Q1. Is um, I think so, yeah, because he obviously crashed in Emil as well. Um and yeah, in the race P sixteen, beaten by both Williams cars. <laughs> yeah, you can probably guess what I'm giving us. <laughs> oh god, go on then. Say it. If if I could, I'd give him an F minus, but I can't, so it's an F. That is bad. Beaten by god, both I'm Williams. I didn't even know me. that. Yeah. Oh, I wow. mean, dear how did you get me. beaten by both Williams in an Alpha Tauri? When your teammates finish sick, I could you're toler a generational talent. <laughs> yeah, I could tolerate, you know, Russell maybe, but Latifi, I mean... Oh, cool. I put some respect on Latifi's name. I'll get on to uh, that with his writing, yeah, but yeah. respect him <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Respect him a little bit. <laughs> we'll move on to Alfa Romeo now. Um, Kimi Raikkonen, uh, comfortably beaten by his teammate. Down in 14th in qualifying, did make it into Q2, which was quite good for Alpha, I guess. And in the race, he was 11th. Um, and I completely take that back, actually, comfortably beaten by his teammate, because I'm looking at the time in it. There's only one second in it. So I don't know where I was thinking that. But um, I guess for Kimmy, though, to get beaten by his teammate, not the greatest uh, weekend for him. Obviously, on a circuit that he will know, like it's on the back of his hand. What are we going to give him, uh, Cam? Oh, you're doing me dirty. Well, <laughs> so normally, 
I'd give Gio and Kimmy the same rating because of how close they are. But can I do them both in one? Like then say Kimmy's and then Gio straight after. Yeah, all right then. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, right. So you bear in mind quality as well. Mm -hmm. I'd give Kimmy a D plus and um no 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 no. I'd give Kimmy a C, Gio a C plus. C. Yeah, yeah, hmm. mate, he's in an Alfa Romeo, and he's a second behind points. True, but he was also beaten by Giovinazzi. Like that's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, that's why he's got a lower rating than Giovinazzi. Right, so C, and Giovinazzi. What was the, sorry? What did you say C again? Plus. Repeat, C plus. Yeah. I feel like Gio did do a really good weekend though. Like I did see some things about him, and it's like, you know, starting to just grab a hold of his seat in F1 now he's not always looking at Kimmy in terms I don't of know about that, him yeah. but well you know in terms of this season he has been yeah. better he normally gets beaten every race by Kimmy and now he's actually starting to you know show a bit of pace um, in terms of actually finishing ahead of Kimmy obviously Kimmy is absolutely ancient but you know <laughs> Kimmy's not got a single point this season and Giovanni's oh, got him yeah <laughs> And uh, Giovinazzi's got their first point now in Mon um, through, uh, because of Monaco, sorry. And yeah. um, I mean that's crazy to think Alfa Romeo didn't have a single point all season. But um, not really surprised, but yeah. But they were a little bit better, Alfa, in uh, Monaco. Maybe that's because of the Ferrari connection. Who knows? But because um, the uh, the engine's really good at acceleration, but it's really bad at top speed. Yeah. So. Decent result uh, for Gio, and um, and yeah, Raikkonen only just missing out on points. Uh, Haas next up, uh, Mick oh. Schumacher. Bad weekend, lots of crashes in practice sessions, uh, well, big crashes, he... and you know he got beaten by Mazepin, mm. beaten by Mazepin. So that's pretty. <laughs> that's See, pretty I'm bad. I think he's going to sound incredibly biased and incredibly ridiculous. Oh, mm, God. But the guy was not worse than Mazepin this weekend. I reckon Mazepin was worse this weekend. I'll do them both to together disagree. again. That's brutal. Well, no, no, do you know he the reason why? Out. Give him a. Do you know him the reason why Schumacher's behind Mazepin? Well, it's Monaco. That'll be why, but. No, 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 no. He's speaking. No, no, no. Schumacher was ahead, like. On pace, on strategy. Oh yeah, he got him on. Uh, there was like one, a, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, there was like a. I think it was like a fuel measure issue. I think Ricardo had it a few years ago. So mm. they had to make him an extra pit stop. That's the only reason he was behind him. Right. And there's no doubt about it. Schumacher was quicker than Mazepin this weekend. Well, True. not this weekend. Last weekend was it? Last weekend or was it? Nah. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. On Monaco. Yeah. Um, yeah. A bit late. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't know. You know what? I will give them both D's. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There you are. Give them both D's. <laughs> yeah. No. Schumacher was quicker, but he crashed. He bottled it. Both D's. Yeah. That's probably Mazepin's highest grade of the season. So he can. Jog yeah. On I mean, <laughs> does Mazepin deserve a plus? I mean, no. When is he ever going to beat Schumacher for the rest of the season? Uh, when Schumacher gets issues. I I'm not giving know, him a plot to think... Schumacher's other issues. Well, that's know. like me going, okay, so um, Bottas is out of the race, so Lewis has beat his teammate, so he gets a, he gets a C. Mm, yeah, but if I mean, you... there's a difference I, from I, being I... out of the race and having a problem. Can I just say, right, you stopped me giving signs a plus. Can I stop you oh, giving yeah, Mazepin? Okay, okay. Yeah? I'll, 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 allow it. It. I'll allow it. <laughs> Both D's go on. <laughs> and to round it off, we've got Williams. So, George oh, Russell. God. Williams had a bit of a bang average uh, weekend. They didn't really like uh, Monaco at all. George I Russell. don't like F1. Yeah, at the that. minute, at the minute, yeah. Uh, George Russell, half a second quicker than Latifi in qualifying. And then, yeah, they uh, both cars just finished in sync at the end. Literally nothing between them in uh, 14th yeah. and 15th, respectively. Um, what a, We could probably do both of these in a one really. Um, uh, For me, it's the same as, same as the last. Exactly. Yeah. Do you not think, though, yeah. Russell being that 
much quicker than the TV gets anything. You know else. what? Did Russell get to Q3? Uh, Q2? Uh, oh, you're testing me. Uh, yes, he did. Alright, we'll take Mazapin's plus, stick on Russell. Okay, so D plus for Russell and a bang average D for Nicholas Latifi. What I will um, say though is ooh, Latifi is yeah. criminally underrated. Well, that I will. You're trying to open a tin of worms there, Cam, and I am resisting it because I could definitely it. no. Let them out. It's yeah, closed. Put the tin back on. No, <laughs> no, we will save that for another time. <sighs> but um, that, that will live another day. <laughs> yes, we we will come back to that one another uh, podcast because that is that for the Monaco review uh, podcast. And uh, yeah, we, apologies if it was a bit late that this is going to go out, but um, it, we got there in the end. And yes, it's nice, uh, Cam, that you've you've got your first podcast under your belt. Hey, Did you enjoy it? <laughs> yes, it was it well, was controversial. Yes, <laughs> I, I enjoyed it, and I've matched the podcast with the GP and made it controversial. Yes, exactly. Um, next up is well, the next episode will be actually. Uh, it will be a driver's rating one. It'll be a, it's more of a clip from one of the other podcasts, but you can check that out on uh, YouTube and probably Spotify as well uh, pretty soon. And then we will have the uh, Azerbaijan Grand Prix preview later this week that you can access. And uh, and yeah, I'm not sure who be on that one. It might be Cam. Who knows? Uh, but uh, we we will have that one. Later on this week, where we'll be looking at some pretty iconic, uh, although Baku's a pretty new circuit, there are some pretty good races uh, back through the years. That is that then, and uh, and yeah, you can find, make sure you subscribe on YouTube, you follow us on all your audio platforms, and you give us a like and all that kind of stuff, share it around with everyone you know will be delighted with any of that uh, and yeah thank you very much for listening we'll see you in the next one